Tom Brady is now pretty much universally known as the greatest quarterback of all time. He's the all-time leading leader in major statistics like career wins, Super Bowl championships, Super Bowl MVPs, playoff wins, and more. He managed to build a dynasty in New England and also win a championship in Tampa. His impact on the game is not up for discussion. However, there was a time where Tom Brady almost went undrafted. Despite being one of, if not the best NFL quarterback of all time, NFL scouts didn't think he was too impressed before joining the league. He was not on anyone's top list of prospects going into the 2000 NFL draft. So how did the Patriots discover that this quarterback could be as great as he ended up being? Today, we go over the Patriots scout who discovered Tom Brady and just how he ended up in New England, unraveling the mystery of the man who discovered Tom Brady. If you are excited for the video, be sure to press the like button and subscribe. We post football documentaries regularly and would love your help to hit 1,000 subscribers. So why was Tom Brady not on anyone's radar going into the NFL draft? The simple answer is he was not a giant star in college. Tom Brady played college football at the University of Michigan, and as a Wolverine, he would have to battle for any substantial playing time. He was not walking into college with a starting role. In fact, it was quite the opposite. Tom Brady was not even expected to start for Michigan. When he first began attending the school, he was quite literally seventh on the depth chart. Obviously, this was not an ideal situation for Brady, and he began to contemplate transfer Something in him changed, though, and instead of wanting to switch colleges, he became hell-bent on winning the starting role. He finally got a chance to play in 1996, when he would enter a game against UCLA that the Wolverines were winning 35-3. Despite this large lead, the pressure got to Tom, and he threw a pick-six on his very first in-game pass. This made the coaching staff even question if they were making a mistake, having him on the team, but he persevered. Things really began to change for Tom in 1998. He had spent his time on the roster, earning his keep, and now was in the middle of a quarterback battle with Drew Henson for the starting job. In 1998, he would win the starting role and played pretty well, all things considered. He had 2,400 yards passing with 14 touchdowns and 10 interceptions. That is an okay season, but it doesn't scream NFL prospect. This decent performance led to another quarterback battle, with Drew Henson going into the 1999 season. This time, the competition went on seven games into the season. Brady and Drew were splitting their starting role 50-50, and both suffered from scouts not having enough film to properly judge. Tom Brady declared for the NFL draft after his senior year at Michigan, but considering he had been sharing the starting role for most of his senior year, there was not a long list of interested parties. Tom Brady did have an okay career at Michigan, and he did have an impressive 20-5 and five record, but he just didn't appear to be NFL material. In the years he spent at Michigan, he had 5,300 yards and 35 touchdowns. That was over two years as a starter and five years at the school. Compare that to Patrick Mahomes' last college season, and he pretty much had those stats in just one year. There really was not a lot of reason to think that Tom Brady would somehow turn into an NFL superstar, especially because the 2000 NFL draft was, at the time, thought to be not that rich with quarterbacks. In retrospect, most of these picks did not work out, but at the time Tom Brady was thought to be a much worse option than Chad Pennington or Giovanni Carmazzi. This sounds insane now, but at the time he was the common opinion. He wasn't even in the top five quarterbacks that year on most draft boards. So what made the Patriots even look into Brady? Believe it or not, quarterback was not anywhere near the top of their priorities at the time. Coming into the draft, the Patriots actually had a quarterback who had been consistently making Pro Bowl appearances. Drew Bledsoe had been with the team since 1993 and honestly had pulled the Patriots out of the gutter. He ended a seven-year playoff drought and even was coming off an almost 4,000-yard season. Despite this, the Patriots had only gone 5-11 and 11, and Bill Belichick was determined to improve no matter what. He told all position coaches and scouts that they were to deep dive almost every college player, regardless of the team needing that position. At the time, they had Bledsoe and two other quarterbacks on the roster, but Bill didn't care. While their most needed positions were mostly on the offensive line and defensive side of the ball, Bill is well known for always drafting the best player available, regardless of position. This culture developed a sense of competition that helped constantly propel the team forward. No one's job was safe, and you constantly had to earn your role on the roster. He divided up positions to their respective coaches and told them to start watching film. He assigned scouting quarterbacks to two people who would forever change the Patriots franchise. There at the time, 
quarterback coach Dick Rabine and their player personnel director Bobby Greer. The two began to comb over film with a fine tooth comb. And even though Brady had shared the starting role his senior year, there was something about his play style that Rabine was drawn to. Dick Rabine was the type of man who could see intangibles in football players. He had been coaching in the league since 1979 when he earned a role as the Packers special teams coach. He spent six years learning the game of football at the highest level before moving to the USFL for a single season and then on to the Minnesota Vikings for a period of seven years. It was on the Vikings he started to become an offensive specialist. While his first job on the Vikings was as a special teams coach, he soon became a receivers coach before moving into an offensive coordinator role. After the Vikings, he went on to the New York Giants, where he would be a tight ends coach, receivers coach, and offensive line coach. Through the years, he amassed an absolute wealth of offensive football knowledge. His move to the Patriots in the year Brady was drafted was almost like it was meant to be. It was the first time he was a quarterback's coach, but after decades of NFL offensive experience, he knew exactly what to look for in a quarterback. In a way, knowing so much about the offensive line and receiver positions gave him a leg up in scouting. Instead of only viewing prospects with the lens of a quarterback coach, he could watch film with the mind of a receiver. Rabine was impressed by Brady's accuracy and ability to perform against his biggest rivals. While some quarterbacks on the college level shrivel when playing ranked teams, Brady actually performed best against equally good D1 programs. He was able to defeat Ohio State, which is incredibly important at Michigan, and he did it with a great completion percentage and poise under pocket. Dick may have only been in his first year with the Patriots, but he knew that Tom was a prospect they couldn't pass on, especially because he knew they would be able to get him with a late round draft pick. By being a late round pick behind Drew Bledsoe, Dick would be able to work with Tom to develop him into the type of quarterback the Patriots needed without the pressure. A high draft pick usually comes with immense expectations for the player. The little film that was available of Brady pointed out to Rabine that he had the intangibles of an NFL quarterback. He just hadn't been in the right system in college. He would end up reaching out to the coach of the Michigan Wolverines and asking for his opinion on Brady. Lloyd Carr let them know that Tom Brady not only could play, but they would never regret drafting him. A quarterback needs to be the leader of a team, and Carr said Brady was the definition of a natural leader. People wanted to follow him, and that trait can't be taught to just any draft pick. There is a certain mental toughness that Tom Brady had to display to stay at a school where he had been seventh on the depth chart and beat out everyone for the job. He was never the most beloved by Michigan fans, but his work ethic was unswayed by pretty much everything going on around him. Greer and Rabine went to Belichick and let him know that based on all the film analysis and information, Tom Brady would be a great quarterback to take in the draft. They had Bledsoe, but Brady had impressed the organization. They initially gave him a third round rating, assuming that there was no way he would make it into the later rounds of the draft. When the sixth round was coming to a close and he was still on board, Bill Belichick made the call to draft Brady. There was no way they could pass up on taking him with the sixth to last pick in the draft. Brady had been just six picks away from going totally undrafted, but he still had an uphill battle. He knew that he was the fourth quarterback on the roster, and there was a chance he wouldn't even make it through training camp. He would manage to make it onto the roster, but was listed as the fourth string quarterback on the depth chart. Unfortunately, before Tom Brady could blossom into the player we know today in the 2001 season, Dick Rabine would tragically pass away from a heart condition. He had been born with an enlarged heart and experienced an event at training camp that caused him to lose consciousness. The next day, the doctors were administering a stress test, and unfortunately, he had another cardiac event and could not be resuscitated. This was a shock to not only the Patriots organization, but to the much more important Rabine's family. The one thing he loved more than football was those closest to him. He leaves behind his wife, Pam, and his two daughters, Betsy and Sarah Beth. At the time, both Betsy and Sarah Beth were kids, and the loss was obviously devastating. There is nothing that can ever come close to filling the hole left by the loss of your father. But the Patriots made sure that Betsy and Sarah Beth had chances to be around the organization, even make sure she was at the iconic playoff game against the Raiders, flying out the family to watch the game. His children have gone to have families of their own and still have a strong connection to the game. They still are huge Tom Brady fans, and their house is full of Rabine-related memorabilia. The man had a great impact on the game of football, from coaching Bart Starr at the start of his career, to choosing Tom Brady before passing. He had a 
deep impact on many legendary figures. The legacy of Raybine lives on to this day, and the impact he's had on players in the game is an entire legacy by itself. After the unfortunate passing of Raybine, the Patriots would go on to have a magical 2001 season led by the quarterback he had so much belief in. The 2001 season was one filled with controversy. Drew Bledsoe took an insane hit in their second game of the season. The hit was so brutal that he actually began to suffer internal bleeding. Thankfully, team doctors were able to get him to the hospital before he bled out, but there was no way he was going to be able to play again the regular season. He would make a full recovery eventually, but not before Tom Brady would step in and take his job. Tom would take over and proceed to win 11 out of 14 games and make the playoffs. He also was selected for the Pro Bowl, mainly because he had played so well after stepping in for Bledsoe. At this point, he was a totally unknown backup quarterback, so stepping in and winning 11 games was blowing everyone's mind. Imagine if next season Mason Rudolph somehow led the Titans to the playoffs and made the Pro Bowl. That is the level of randomness this appeared to be. Going into the playoffs, the Patriots were not favorites by any stretch to make it to the Super Bowl. Sure, they had a good season, but there was no way a team with a backup quarterback could make a deep run. In his very first playoff game, Brady would play lights out, throwing for 312 yards and beating the Raiders after the controversial tuck rule play. The next week would see the Steelers and Patriots competing for the AFC title. Brady would sustain a knee injury in the game, but Bledsoe would step in after coming back from his injury and close out the game with a 24-17 victory. Going into the Super Bowl, there was some discussion over who would be playing quarterback for the Patriots. Bledsoe had stepped in last week and played incredibly well, but Tom had been leading the team all season. The Patriots wound up deciding Tom Brady would lead the team in the Super Bowl, and it would be the best choice they've ever made. But before the game, Tom was asked about the man who had scouted him and had these words to say for Raybine. Coach Raybine was a tremendous influence on my life and all of the quarterbacks' lives. That game would go down in NFL history, with Tom Brady leading a game-winning drive as time expired in a tie game. Adam Vinatieri kicked a field goal as the clock ran out, and the Patriots became Super Bowl champions. This was a testament to Tom Brady's ability, but it is an ability we would have never seen on an NFL field if it wasn't for Raybine. Tom Brady would go on to become the greatest quarterback of all time, but none of this would have happened without one man with an eye for arm talent, taking a risk just six picks before the draft ended. That is the story of the man who discovered Tom Brady. If you enjoyed the video, we would really appreciate you taking a second to press the like button and leave a comment below. What topic would you want to see a video on next? If you like football videos, we post a documentary two times a week, and our last video was investigating why the Chargers left San Diego. If you want to watch it, click the thumbnail on screen now.